So I'm throwing a cutter worm. Right on these little stems, these stems. Well, that's a good one. So I'm throwing a uh, Tri-King cutter worm. And just this new color they just came out with the Tequila Sunrise, the orange flake. Oh, man, I really, really do love this one. That is a chunk right there. Look at that one. Right out of those stems. So what I've got right here is I've got a flat with a bunch of stems that are coming up. I've got a little trough right here coming in, a little deeper water. And what I think is going on here is that wind's blowing that bait across this flat and these fish are set up on these stems. They can spawn out there in those stems. It's really a nice place for them. So what I'm targeting is kind of the outer edge of it where it falls down and it's almost fishing the ledge. And uh, we just picked up a really good one just a few minutes ago doing it. So we're gonna run this a little bit further and see if this is a, a pattern that we can that we can run or if that was you know maybe an isolated target out there that we didn't know about and so we're just going to fish around through these stems with this cutter worm and see what we can do so I'm, I'm i'm looking down at my hummingbirds and i'm seeing some isolated grass and there's a few fish off to the side of it what could be happening is they pull up feed drop back down off the ledge i'm gonna keep them honest out here in this chute right here so on the cutter worm, you can either peg the weight or you can leave it unpegged. I like to leave the, the weight a little unpegged. Cutter worm, you can swim it, you can bounce it, you can hop it, you can just drag it. It's really, really versatile. My favorite way is to unpeg the weight. That way it, it flutters down, it slowly sinks. Sometimes I'm just depending on what the fish are doing. If, if it's windy like it is today, I'll keep it moving a little bit faster than normal. Sometimes I'll, I'll reel it and if I hit a structure, I'll stop it, kill it, and then just kind of traditionally Texas rig, you know, work it. But a lot of times you can just really just throw it out there and just do a slow retrieve all the way back. I like a quarter ounce weight on it. I like to put it on about 17, 15 pound fluorocarbon and just let it get down there and do its little thing. It's got a lot of action with that rage tail. But typically when the wind's blowing, I like to keep a, a, a good steady hop, steady retrieve coming back because it's more of a reaction bite at that point. There, oh, good one. So I've just uh, basically come up to a, uh, where the deeper water kind of comes into the flat and uh, kind of makes like a little gut right here. And, um, you know, those fish will stage right up there on those points and um, just catch whatever bait's coming through. So let's go ahead and get this one. Oh. Once again on that Strike King cutter worm, come right off that point. When I pull up to these situations where there's deeper water coming into a shallower flat, I like to call them a gut. I let the bait hit bottom and I'm coming up the ledge. So I'll make smaller hops and just let that bait walk itself right on up that ledge. And if those fish are positioned with, in this situation with the wind coming at us, they're, they're, they're turning around looking for all that bait coming out of deep water coming into us. So they're just sitting there waiting. And so I'll, I'll slow it down a bit and really work over that whole gut. A lot of times they'll sit right in the middle of it, right in the little deepest channel. And, uh, you know, we just threw through there and first cast, caught a really good one. <sighs> Same thing, right on that point. Oh, yeah, pull and drag, huh? Like that. Right on that point. Get that in, buddy. How chunky that one is. Look at the belly on that. 